They are in the mainstream. It's because they haven't been asked. They haven't been put on the spot about these beliefs. If they were put on the spot, they would have to disavow. And then people would realize, okay, these are charlatans. They're not actually traditional. They're not actually orthodox. This is a, a kind of trick, again, that's pulled on uh, Muslims because they're, the mainstream media never will feature someone like me or a true traditional Muslim. Why? Because it's challenging the liberal doctrines. It is something that will undermine liberalism and the way that they will cancel religious Muslims, and they disqualify religious Muslims from these kinds of mainstream outlets is through a kind of interrogation. So you'll notice that in the debates that I've had with liberals, or even I did a, I had a conversation with an Orthodox Christian. His name is uh, Daryush or Rush Valizade. Rush, I, we did that interview. What they always bring up is the Ill illiberal aspects of Islam. They'll say, Okay, you're a Muslim. Do you support slavery? <laughs> you're a Muslim. Do you support a minor marriage or the Prophet ﷺ marrying Aisha? Do you support the punishment for blasphemy? They ask these questions even though the debate topic or the conversation topic is not about that. But it doesn't matter. They want to immediately undermine you. They want to immediately stigmatize uh, your views now compare that kind of interrogation that I will get in these debates or these conversations with the kind of conversations that Ben Shapiro has or Matt Walsh on the Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro is an Orthodox Jew. He claims to be an Orthodox Jew. Matt Walsh claims to be a Catholic, a traditional Catholic. And guess what? In the Talmud, they also have all kinds of uh, teachings on minor marriage. They have punishments for blasphemy. They have slavery. They have the idea of uh, wife beating or physically disciplining wives. Those are all things in the Talmud, but no one brings that up for Ben Shapiro. Same with Matt Walsh. Like There are very illiberal things within Catholic doctrine, including punishment for blasphemy, slavery, minor marriage. These are all things that were found in the Catholic tradition. But Matt Walsh is not grilled on those things. So this makes it seem like, okay, we can have traditional Jews and we can have traditional Catholics and Christians who are on these mainstream outlets and can be political commentators. They can have these kinds of channels where they are in the mainstream. But it's because they haven't been asked. They haven't been put on the spot about these beliefs. If they were put on the spot, they would have to disavow. They would have to disavow and then people would realize, okay, these are charlatans. They're not actually traditional. They're not actually orthodox or they're like agents to re reforming their own religious traditions. But Muslims, we have to be on the sidelines because immediately we're asked about the Islam, about the Quran. So imagine like you are in a, I'm in a debate or I'm in a conversation I say, look, you know, let's have a debate or let's have a conversation about what Islam says about prayer, uh, Islamic theology, Islamic understanding of marriage and sexual ethics or Islamic understanding of architecture or uh, agriculture or any of these things. And then the opponent or the interviewer says, well, you're a Muslim. So what do you think about the marriage of the Prophet ﷺ to Aisha? when she was six years old. What do you think of that? So immediately you are put in on the spot. If you say, you know, I, I have no problem with that. Uh, this is something that I don't think is morally wrong. Okay, then you're gonna be branded as your disgusting terrorist uh, X, Y, Z. <laughs> so you're, dis you're disqualified, you're discredited. If you say something like, well, you know, I, I don't think that kind of marriage is uh, applicable for this day and age, or there's like context or whatever, then you're still going to get branded. You are disgusting. You're a terrorist. You're a predator. You're X, Y, Z. If you say, even if you say that's not applicable today, because they'll say, well, you have to condemn it. Even the prophets all the time, you have to condemn your prophet for doing this. You have to condemn your prophet for engaging in uh, warfare. You have to condemn him for, uh, all of these kinds of policies like uh, corporal punishment, stoning, and lashing, etc.
So you can't just say it's not applicable in our times. People will just say, well, uh, so condemn it in the past. Fine. You don't think it's applicable in our times, but you have to condemn it in the past. The only thing that you can say that will be even closely satisfactory is to deny everything and say, no, I reject minor marriage. I, yes, the Prophet Sallallahu did something wrong. He was mistaken. That's the only way, that's the only kind of acceptable answer within the mainstream discourse. And even then, you'll have some people, like you'll have uh, the right wing or the Zionists who'll say, you're lying, you're doing taqiyya, you're hiding the truth, you're hiding your true belief. So even that, in that case, you'll also lose. <laughs> but the point is that Muslims are systematically disqualified from mainstream political discourse because we are going to stick to the truth. We're not going to compromise. We're not going to water down. We're not going to sell out like the Ben Shapiro's, the Matt Walsh's, the Jordan Peterson's. So that, that essentially means we're excluded from mainstream political discourse. We don't get invited like um, to talk to certain people, to be on certain platforms, to address certain issues. It's a systematic e exclusion. So this is, this is the strategy that they use to prevent that. And, you know, even when it comes to unapologetic critics of liberalism, even they will succumb to these tactics. So sometimes you have people who are unapologetic. They are loud and proud about being traditional, but then they get in front of this interviewer, the liberal interviewer, who is going to grill them and force, them, oh, do you think that women are property? Like what happened with Pierce Morgan and Andrew Tate, right? And then Andrew Tate, buckles like in that interview which i analyzed and critiqued from uh, like a month ago or a few weeks ago so even the most unapologetic speakers will buckle uh in the face of this kind of liberal pressure and this liberal interrogation but muslim skeptic alhamdulillah we try to avoid it we want to be honest we want to be principled we don't want to compromise we don't want to sell out and that's why we have we say things in a clear-cut way. You ask us, okay, what does Islamic law say about blasphemy? What does Islamic law say about capital punishment for apostasy? What does Islamic law say about fornication, adultery, homosexual acts? What does Islam say about uh, blasphemy and you know religious tolerance? What does Islamic law say about this? We say clear-cut. This is the Islamic stance. This is what the Islamic tradition says. We're not going to... Uh, cherry pick. We're not going to distort. We want to be 100% honest because we have nothing to hide. Islam is superior and it is very obvious why it is superior to all of these uh, other ideologies and religions. Um, we don't need to hide anything. We can explain it rationally for people to understand uh, in a very clear language that people can appreciate and uh, uh, become Muslim. Uh, so, that's, you know, that's the whole message of Muslim skeptic and our entire approach.